Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and today we are going to discuss about installing Visual Studio 2017 in our machine and let's see a first look of how Visual Studio 2017 RC is going to look like. So I'm going to very quickly install the Visual Studio 2017 in our machine and see what are the different kinds of functionalities and changes that they have made. So for that, I'm just going to go to the Visual Studio website. So for that, I'm just going to search. All right, so there is a Visual Studio 2017 release candidate. So I'm going to download that. And I'm going to download the Visual Studio 2017 Enterprise Edition. All right, so I'm going to run this. So I have heard that Visual Studio 2017 have changed the installation process a lot. I mean, you can split the installation based on your requirement. So right now it is totally modularized than before. So it's not like something which you can just choose for the web development and for the Android development, something like that. But you can even granularize the choosing of options like development for the Azure, development for the Dockers and development for the Office, SQL, something like that. And it's right now it's more modernized than before. And that's what is the real power of the Visual Studio 2017 RC's feature. So let's quickly see what's going to be the installer going to look like. And you can see that the installer itself is a web installer and it is going to fetch some of the required information from its own website. All right, finally, all the informations are loaded for the installer. And you can see that the web installer itself is right now split into so many sections like Windows, Web and Cloud, and there is something called Mobile and Gaming, and there is other tool set. And for the Web and Cloud, the more focus is on the web development, Azure development, Node.js development, and you can see there is something called data science and analytics applications. Office and SharePoint development, .NET Core and Docker Preview. So this is kind of interesting because you can now start deploying your .NET Core app which can run in any platforms and you can bundle that into Docker and then you can release or deploy that as a Docker image into the DockerHub.com. So this is really cool. And this consumes 4.59 GB and you can see that it requires web development tools and development analytics, analytics tools, continuous developer for Visual Studio and so many things. .NET development, desktop development, you still require the console application development and Visual Basic development and C-sharp development. So we require this as well. So this will again turn to the size of 5.09 ZB. So we required that. And of course the desktop development with C++, I don't require it though. And you can see that it is very, very modularized right now. You can even modularize in here. For instance, you don't require the live unit testing, you can remove that. And if you don't require the IntelliTrace, you can remove that. And the size will again change. The 5.09 will now turn into 5.08. And if you don't require the JIT, you can remove that. And the Entity Framework 6 toolset, if you don't require, you can still remove it if you want, you can keep it. But I don't require it for now because I don't really develop the EF for now so I'm just going to leave it right now and then I'm going to hit install and you can see that this is the whole information required to be provided for the installer for installing and this is going to take a lot of time for my internet connectivity so I'll be back once the downloading of the Visual Studio is done. Alright the installation of Visual Studio was smooth it downloaded the Visual Studio from Microsoft website and then it installed the Visual Studio for me and now let's quickly see how it looks like so I just opened the Visual Studio to do some initial settings like opening it and signing in and choosing which theme I need so that's the only thing I did after the installation because it also required me to restart the machine so I restarted that and everything was fine and now the Visual Studio is going to open and let's quickly see how it looks like all right, so this is the new user interface for the Visual Studio. And as you can see that there is not much change here, but the only change which I can tell is this. There is a developer network news pane, which is cluttered before. It was just here and there, but right now they have taken it into a separate pane altogether. And then there is a search project template. So you can also search, I guess, if I search for console project, something like that. Hey, there we go. So it's also bringing me the console application, console app.net framework and console app for Visual Basic and C Sharp. So you can choose the language as well. So this is a kind of searching feature because right now with Visual Studio, there are so many projects being supported. Something like Xamarin, something like 
Android development, Apache Cordova. So there are so many things and right now it's better that you search for which kind of project template you're going to look for. And this is really cool as well. And I really like the feature because most of the time I just go and open the project, go to the windows and then I select the console application. Right now I know what application I got to develop. So I just type in console, go in here and boom, it's going to choose me the console application and it's bringing me the new project window, which is kind of great. And there is the .NET Core application as well right now, which is also great because earlier versions of Visual Studio did not support the .NET Core out of the box. So you should have the Visual Studio Core and then you should develop the .NET Core in there. But there was a plugin and that was not something where you can see the .NET Core application, something like this. Right now it is available out of the box. And there are, what are the features? Cloud, all right, and there's a test. So these are cool, but in the unit testing, there is something called as live unit testing that we saw in the installer, which was a new feature. And we will talk about that in our later videos of this Visual Studio 2017 series. But as of now, let it be, we just leave it as it is. And let me quickly show you how it looks like for the console application. So since this is a first look, we'll just try a very, very simple Hello World program and see how things work. So I'm gonna create a console application and just name it as Execute Automation. So this should create me a console application project. All right, great. So this is the console application project. So it's created a class and you can see that there is a references being added. So everything is cool. And this is a connector services. This is kind of new because I guess you can directly deploy this to an Azure service. There we go. And you can deploy this to the cloud storage uh, if you want. And this is uh, something new again, which is changed and what else so you have this kind of dot in here which shows that this is the end of this particular process and what else okay this is the another highlighting feature i guess so you can see where your cursor is being moved which is also good let's write this console and this intelligence is a little bit changed as you can see here you can choose the locals and parameters from here if you want just the methods you can choose this and if you want the interfaces, you can choose this to select only the interfaces and remove the methods. And if you want the classes, you can choose this and it will bring all the classes required. And if you want all struct or structures, you can bring this and it will just show you all the structs. Similarly, if you want something like enums, similarly all the delegates and all those things. So this is also kind of cool because these were something which is more useful if you're working with a large project where we have something which we require. So this is again, it's a kind of filtering option available on the intelligence out of the box. So let's see what else we can do with this. Console, oops, console dot right line. And I'm gonna say, hello execute automation all right and then i'm going to write a console dot read line so that it will just show you the all right let's quickly run this and see how it works basically microsoft claimed that visual studio 2017 is very faster than visual studio 2015 in terms of loading and also in terms of executing so let's see what speed it has increased so i'm going to build and also going to start running it right now it seems like it's building the project and it's taking little time than the normal 2015 maybe it's still not the final version it's in rc that's why it's taking a little more time all right it's opening the diagnostic tool so these are something which is available in the enterprise version and that's the reason it's taking so much of time there we go we brought this hello execute automation so it it also shows this information as well. And another thing is Visual Studio 2017 has C Sharp 7.0 out of the box support. So you can write a lot of different kinds of codings and techniques. And again, those are not the scope of this particular video, but those are separate videos, which I will be releasing in our next videos of this 2017 series of Exit Automation. So this is the first look and the installation of Visual Studio 2017 RC in our machine. So we will see what are the different kinds of other features available in Visual Studio 2017 in our next video of this series. Thank you.